All right, guys, so today I'm going to answer some YouTube comment questions that some people ask. I can't really make videos on specific things like this one right here, so I'm just going to answer a bunch of questions that you guys have asked me and that I can kind of give a quick answer instead of making an entire video on it. So right here, uh, Tone Gone Thor. Uh, wait, wait, let me see if I'm... Okay, so Tone Gone Thor says, What do you do after you die the first time, especially with no Lodi? Um, there's a few different things that I could do if I have no Lodi. Um, if it's a really bad game and I see that there's not a lot of people alive and stuff like that, then I could just leave immediately because the game is not worth it. But if I die the first time, no Lodi. Uh, I usually try to find my teammates, try to get a gun where they're at. Or sometimes if there's like a highly populated area, like let's just say control center, and a lot of people are on the roof, then I can go to the bottom, try to look for a gun super fast, and then I can just try to push the roof right there. So it is really ri risky, but if you want to be the most secure, then just go where your teammates are. If they kill somebody, you can take the guns of the person right there, and then you can start pushing towards the middle or just wherever there is people. Another thing I do kind of want to address is a lot of people are saying in this Bloom video that they actually removed Bloom and what I'm referring to is hip fire spread and accuracy with the dot in the middle. So let me just try to like pull that right around here, that dot right here. Um, wait. So this thing right here, uh, apparently it's not called Bloom. I was taught that Bloom is just that area of effect of the hip fire spread and stuff that you can kind of use and just have a baseline of where your bullets are going to go whether it's called bloom or not i did refer to this as the area of effect to where you can shoot that thing so that is what i refer to in the video where i talk about bloom um if bloom is a completely different thing then i guess i just didn't reference it right but that is exactly what i meant in that video uh ayo it's dizzy says at the fifth seal what's the best way to warm up our first couple games on like staying focused and not throwing games even on two kills four dust games when you just when you want to just hit play again um okay so i talked about the the warm up or just how to warm up your gun skill and stuff but i think he's just trying to say warm up your first couple games to kind of get the rhythm of being in a lot of high kill games or just get good pacing and i guess i would just say hot drop you know if you hot drop a lot and it's like okay i'm gonna warm up and stuff you shouldn't be landing in areas that people aren't gonna be because by the time you get into a gunfight you're not gonna be warm and you're not gonna have that consistency of killing people so just going to i try to go to hot drops regardless just because that's where all the kills are but just pushing yourself into those areas don't be in areas where people are not gonna go and just trying to find loot and get a loadout because by the time you find people you're not gonna be warmed up so that is what i have to say to that do you also play on keyboard i tried keyboard a few times i don't have the desk space i don't plan on playing keyboard um because i feel like most of the community is on controller i do enjoy the game a lot more on controller i understand there is a big community of people who still even watch my videos that play on keyboard but um there's a lot of concepts that i talk about that relate to both but if i'm telling you about abusing aim assist or doing certain things to your movement that help you use aim assist then that is really not gonna you know benefit the keyboard players as much in that area but no if it's like competitive gameplay with keyboard only i don't think i have the knowledge to be able to master that on keyboard so no i do not play on keyboard and the videos that i post can help with keyboard but it's not directed towards that audience okay forest hair says whenever i am strafing left to right really quickly i almost always jump on accident or it's just messy in general any tips on practicing and making strafing much more consistent thanks King. also how do you schedule co <laughs> coaching sessions thanks so he's saying strafing left and right really quickly i almost always jump on accident um i think i talk multiple times the reason why i play bumper jump or tactical flip is that my jump button is all the way on the left side of my controller compared to the right so if you're moving left and right and then you're pressing the x or a button depending on which controller or console you play on i think that also could be the reason why you jump but for the most part just like moving left and right really quickly it's just moving the analog stick left and right if you need to practice it then yeah put like one or two bots on put on like a short map speedball shipment and then just try to do it without doing movement don't do movement just move left and right don't do no slide cancels drop shots or anything just move left and right and practice strafing that way just so you can get the rotational aim assist and then schedule coaching sessions you can just go on my discord and message me that you're interested and then i'll help you set up with that <laughs> so you'll see have you ever dropped a nuke in free for all no dropped a, a few nukes team death match domination which i actually have a uh, gameplay on that on my oldest 
uh, videos. Let me see if I can find it real quick in case you guys are ever interested in me dropping a nuke. Okay, so this video right here, two nukes, one vid. I dropped two nukes in one video if you guys are ever interested in that. And then I think uh, I dropped a nuke on shipment with an Amex somewhere over here. Where are you? Shipment nuke, but I didn't reverse boost. So yeah, there, if you're ever interested in any nukes, uh, you can go to those videos. Bro, do you use control freaks? I have made multiple videos where I either said I like them, I don't like them, I'm very like, you know, picky about using them or just like, I have mixed feelings about them. But overall, I do not use control freaks and I'm kind of in the phase where I don't like using them because I know control freaks are really good for precise aiming. But like I said in my recent videos, if you have that um, hit fire first and then you ADS, you're gonna get a lot of aim assist to the point where you don't need that super precise movements. And also control freaks, I've said it multiple times and never changed my mind about this. They always make my movements a lot harder to do because it's just more precise instead of having a general direction of moving my stick. So no, if I can get the same aim assist and the same accuracy without them, I'm not gonna use control freaks. I do not like them. Hey fifth, which aim curve are you playing? Currently, I am on the dynamic one just because it's easier. I have talked about linear a lot in the past. Linear, I do things a lot faster uh, as far as you know, looking around and stuff like that. But dynamic is just so simple and easy to use that like I don't want to complicate my settings too much because if it's more consistent and it's just like easier, then you can kind of get more fluent gameplays without trying super hard. So that's why I use dynamic. What graphic card do you have? All my graphics cards or just PC specs are in my about page. If you go on my YouTube and then just go to the about me, you can see all those stuff right there. And then if you guys ever have um, questions about my graphics and stuff, if you go to my second channel, the six seal, uh, how to get the best graphics in Warzone, just click on it right there and you can get my graphics settings. Bully the snail says root beer. Okay, interesting. Is centering easier slash smoother at higher FOV levels? I don't know, I'm on PS5, and every time I pop daddy with skills FOV to 90, I believe, I feel like my movement and centering is so much smoother. Well, I do think centering is so much easier on console. I made a video about that, um, pretty much like the three tips for console players. But it can feel, it, kind, it can kind of feel a little bit like easier to move your reticle around when you have the higher FOV, but it is gonna be a lot harder to center onto specific things, being that your reticle is a lot smaller compared to a smaller FOV. So centering can probably feel that way, but as far as actually being able to center and hitting your shots, the lower FOV is always going to be better. I'm curious, why does Seal use the Japanese version of the game? I use it just, just because it makes the game a little bit more different, I like the audio of it, and then I try to mute out any profanity and things like that, so when it's in Japanese, it's like you can't really either understand it or they don't use those lines, so I just like the Japanese version of the game, it's just a lot more cooler, you know, sounds like an anime, and it's all for aesthetic, it doesn't really give any type of benefit, if anything it would probably give, you know, a disadvantage because if I don't know something and I'm looking through things like picking my class setup, it's not gonna help at all. What does YouTube life mean? Okay, so some people ask, you know, I put on my main channel that I have console service or coaching services. When I do the YouTube life thing, that means uh, teaching you about like algorithm and helping your channel grow on YouTube for life. So I put you on like a list and then anytime you need like some advice or suggestions, then I'm able to help you like over and over and over instead of just saying, okay, you know, $20 an hour just for the YouTube thing. Cause I think that is, you know, very pricey. So that's what I do mean by YouTube for life. And then the in-game coaching is per hour. Some people also ask me, you know, like the video about my PR, what's the highest kills you dropped or just what your current settings are. So I'm going to go over that video over here. So a little, probably like a month ago or so this right here, I broke my PR with this loadout and got 41 kills in this video right here. You can see the class setup that I use with that. And then I do show my settings here. So my setting, my settings should be the exact same, except I do use uh, six, six right now, instead of here, I used 11, 11. So with the high sense thing, um, I don't think it's too much of a difference. I do think I played better with six, six compared to 11 cents. But if you do get a pretty bad lobby, it doesn't matter too much what your settings are. 
And people also ask a lot, what are your current DS4 settings? Recently, I took off DS4, uh, mainly because, you know, I have certain binds and I macro on that. And I feel like if I ever play it on a LAN tournament or if I ever play it on somebody else's setup, I can't use DS4 and it would give me a disadvantage and stuff. So when I play on actual tournaments or just other places where I have to take that off, it's going to hinder my performance and I'm not going to be able to play the game well. So if I limit the amount of third party applications or other things that I do and just have a more general amount of settings, then I will be able to play on pretty much any setup and I'll just be good at the game overall instead of having to rely on third party applications like DS4. And along with that, the third party applications that I mainly use uh, are time resolution, just decreases the latency. And then there's another one called like Riva Tuner Statistics, which pretty much limits my FPS. But I kind of took that off because sometimes it was, limiting, it was limiting it too much to the point where it was affecting my performance. So the only really thing I use is the timer resolution right there. Well, I think that's it for answering all these frequently asked questions. If you guys want to comment down below and you have any more questions about anything, then I guess I can just use this video right here to just check frequently the common questions that people ask me. Because if you're asking me questions throughout all the videos that I post, I'm either just going to forget them or not click on these videos. So this can kind of be like a video where any single time that you have a question, you can click on this video and then ask it right here. And I should be able to answer it a lot more frequently than if if I'm just answering uh, questions for any other video. So if you have any more questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below. And if you want another video like this later in the future, like maybe months down the line or something, just can kind of give a refresh of just frequently asked questions and let me know in the comment section as well if you want that.